After 12 hours in bed, you wake up at about 11 o'clock in the morning. In that 12 hours, you may or may not have been sleeping. Um, you've got no appetite, but some vague sort of sickness in your belly says that something's got to get put in there. Um, so you get out of bed, walk all stiff and sore from laying in bed too long, uh, bleary-eyed, into the kitchen. Um, you're going to go into the fridge and hopefully something is there, maybe some bread or hopefully, probably ideally, um, some milk. Milk you can pour down your throat without very little effort and there's a reasonable amount of nutrition in it. It might sort of stave off that nauseous hunger feeling in your belly. Um, as I said, you don't feel like eating at all, but something's got to be done. All right, let's get this over with. You want a glass to pour the milk into. You look over into the sink. The sink is full of dirty dishes. There are no clean dishes left in the house. It's a simple matter of washing the dishes and you've got dishes. Uh, you've got one clean uh, glass to pour your milk into. Well, the whole thing is simply too much too much for you to bear. You can't even summon the, the mental strength to wash the dishes. You drink uh, some milk right from the carton or bottle, whatever you've got in there, and you, lay, you, you walk in and lay down or throw yourself, plop yourself down into the couch. You turn on the TV, maybe, meaningless. There's, whatever TV show is on there seems almost identical to everything else, regardless of what's on. And you just sort of lay there in this stricken state. That's a morning of a depressed person, a, a, usually a fairly depressed person getting to that stage. But the key point in all of this is the effort involved in doing anything. The mess in the kitchen of the dishes is far more than you possibly can cope with. But you don't get off lightly with simply turning around, refusing to do it, and laying down. Immediately, the first roadblock that's put in your way, i.e. not one clean uh, glass for your milk, sets off a chain reaction of completely contradictory, agonizing, and nonsensical and confusing thoughts. You want, you want a clean glass to drink. Civilized people drink out of glasses. There's nobody around to see you, but I don't know, you, this is how you define civilization at that one particular moment. You, there's no clean glasses. Wash the dishes. I can't. A voice says, you lazy SOB, why can't you just wash a dish? All right, I'll try and wash some dishes. The same voice says, you can't do it, you're no damn good. Oh, God. And contradictor contradictorially, <laughs> if that word exists, you're ordered around by this strange voice inside your own head, telling you how horrible you are, how you've got to get up off your butt, but nothing you ever do will ever amount to anything. You can't even wash the dishes, but you'd better wash the dishes because civilized people do that, but you'll never get it done because you're so useless. And this all takes place maybe in the span of 30 seconds. That's what a depressed person can go through. I won't say everybody goes through it like that, but... Uh, it's, uh, it is a whirling tempest of the brain with generally the voice telling you the worst possible things for you to hear. Small little things become nightmares of inadequacy, confusion, and impossibility. Um, now, okay, you g I got through that. I've, I dealt with many days like that a long time ago, but I got through it. And generally, the, ma way, the way I recall I coped with it all, probably A, with the strength of youth, and B, um, simply by shutting everything else out in my entire life except going to work, I somehow managed to hold down a job at the time um, and not ever doing anything else. On days off, you just lay in bed. Maybe you get up and watch TV. That's it. Uh, I was a smoker at the time, so cigarettes were about the only thing that I ever bothered to go out of the house for other than food. And that was that. <clears throat> now, okay... This is a common story, I think, a little um, way in which life's little, not even annoyances, life's little duties become absolute nightmarish exercises in total madness. Well, okay, antinatalism is a philosophy that is simply uh, virtually impossible to get implemented. Um, you're, you've got to convince 7 billion people not to breed anymore, and most of them are hell-bent on breeding if they haven't already bred. 
Um, <laughs> it's not going to happen. You're on a loser. Okay, I'm an eccentric person. I'm used to being on a loser. I, 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 it doesn't bother me in the least if nine million people tell me that my ideas are completely crazy. I don't care. I'm used to that. It, it, it's just something that, uh, that I accept as part of my personality. But to the depressive, to, or to the person at least in the throes of Great Depression, taking on something that is impossible, taking it seriously, and defining yourself as such is probably the worst possible thing you could do. Um, washing the dishes can become a nightmare. Getting the strength and the mental clarity to stand still in front of the sink long enough to wash the dishes can be a challenge. It can be a very difficult thing that, that again, can result in you being completely paralyzed by the thought of it. Now, <laughs> taking on an idea like convincing everybody on Earth not to breed, uh, I mentioned before that antinatalism anti for the depressed, or using antinatalism as some sort of therapy for depression or means of coming to terms with it, uh, is the same thing as treating alcoholism with whiskey. Well, I think actually that was a bit of a, a, a bit of an understatement. Everything looks impossible when you're depressed. How much more damage must you be doing to someone's self-esteem, their ability to to concentrate, their ability to to, to get them get their their life together than to throw in their lap probably the most absurdly Sisyphean task um, Herculean labor uh, that one can possibly think up it's not just useless to, to for a, a depressive to get into antinatalism it's guaranteed to, to ramp the whole thing up by probably a factor of maybe oh I don't know a million um, You've, you've really, really taken on far more than you can chew when you're in that state if you get into something that's going to change the way the entire world operates and the entire human race has always operated. Um, the depressed person is probably better off with working up their self-esteem in small doses and their sense of accomplishment, like in washing the dishes and uh, shaving the stubble off their chin. It's a lot more realistic and a lot more conducive to getting better than impossible schemes. Leave the impossible schemes to non-depressed people. Uh, we're quite capable of handling those. <laughs> Thank you.